Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, my name is Sabelle. I'll be your facilitator for tonight. We are obviously dedicated to excellence tonight and brought to you by Cherry uh, Creek Schools. Uh, we're bringing you some amazing institutions for you to check out and just learn some more information through your college search process. Tonight's virtual college fair is a HBCU, HSI, and NASI virtual college fair. So you'll be hearing from some of these institutions tonight. But before we get started, just quickly, I have some housekeeping items for you all just to keep in mind and make sure things run smoothly. Now, you're going to want to interact with the panelists and the presenters for tonight, and I definitely recommend that you ask them questions. But you may be wondering, how do you ask those questions? So there's actually a Q&A button down at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Go ahead and use that Q&A button to type your questions in, and then uh, your presenters could definitely answer them throughout the presentation for tonight. Please make sure to ask these at any time. You don't have to wait for the present, uh, presenter for the institution you're looking for um, to, to come up up and then ask. And also, please don't wait until the last minute. It is a 45 minute uh, virtual college fair. And so at the end, we will not be having a live Q&A. So it's really important that you ask these questions um, throughout the entire virtual college fair. Also, when you are asking questions, please make sure to address the institution it is for so they know who the question goes to. Also, this is a webinar style virtual college fair. Um, and so your camera and microphone are turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, in terms of signing up for more sessions, unfortunately, we don't have any more college presentations uh, for tonight. But if you are interested in any other colleges or institutions out there, you're more than welcome to go ahead and register pretty much the same way you registered for this session as well. Last but certainly not least, super important, you may have a friend that missed out on tonight. You may have by accident uh, totally not heard a presenter for tonight, or maybe mom or grandma or somebody wants to check it out. Uh, please make sure you understand that this is being recorded. Uh, so it will be available to you. All sessions are recorded and it should be available within the next coming days at strivescan.com backslash Cherry Creek. So go ahead and check that out in the next coming days. Without further ado, I would love to introduce our first institution. We have Azusa Pacific University. Great, thank you so much. I am going to start sharing my screen. My name is Brooke and I'm from Azusa Pacific University today and I'm so excited to be with you. So very first, I wanna show you a little map of our area. I know you are from a long ways away um, and we are actually located in Southern California. So you can see up at the top, we're located right at the base of the San Gabriel Mountains. And one of my favorite things to do is to hike around the area. We are also about 45 minutes from Los Angeles. So we're close to the Dodgers Stadium, Hollywood, all of that good stuff. And then we are about 45 minutes from Anaheim. And in Anaheim, we have our beloved at Disneyland, our Angels Baseball Stadium, um, and some other great areas as well. And then I also love to point out that we're about 45 minutes from the beach. So our students always love to be able to go there on the weekends um, and attend as well. And then you'll notice some airplanes. We have tons of airports in the area. I know you guys will want to go home and visit family. So that's always a really great perk as well. All right, so this is a little bit of a breakdown of who we are as an institution and what it sort of looks like. So we are a mid-sized university. Right now we're sitting at about 10,500 students and it's about 50% grad and 50% undergrad. Um, and I really love this because even as a staff member, it is just great to walk around campus and see students interacting with their friends. Um, we have a place on campus called Cougar Walk and our students are always just running up, hugging each other. Um, but then it also allows our students to be able to meet new people through their class sizes as well. We have 71 bachelor's degrees and 49 master's degrees, as well as eight doctoral programs. The great thing about this is that um, if you're anything like me, I changed my major four times. I was very unsure of what I wanted to do, um, but our institution provides lots of majors for our students to be able to find something that really fits you well. Um, and then our master's degrees link up really well with our bachelor's degrees as well. Um, a lot of our programs that you do in your bachelor's, you can actually complete some of your master's classes as well. And I am currently working on my master's in business management and have absolutely loved APU's program. We're also a private Christian institution, and I'll kind of touch a little bit more on that later, but it's definitely a good thing to note. And we are also a four-year institution. So with almost all of our programs, you'll be able to complete that in four years um, if you're taking the right amount of units. Um, and we, of course, have people to set you up with that as well. 
All right, so this is our logo. If you walk around our campus, you'll be able to see this on any of our signs or anything like that. And what it represents is our four cornerstones. So the very first one that you'll see is Christ. Like I mentioned, we are a private Christian institution. What that means is that our faculty and staff are required to be Christian, but you as a student are actually are not required to be a student, um, are required to be a Christian to come to APU. So you're totally free to come no matter your background. We really love to welcome students from all different areas of life, but there are a couple of things that we sort of tie in with that cornerstone. Um, so one of those first things is chapel. We ask that our students participate in chapel that happens three times a week um, and you are able to go. The very first part of our chapel experience is kind of a student-led worship time and then the second half we bring in um, speakers that are tailored to talking to young people. Um, it's just a really great time for our really our entire campus to kind of center and refocus um, during their time throughout the week. And the next one is scholarship. One of the things I love about APU is the fact that we have a very small student to faculty ratio. So our student to faculty ratio is currently sitting at 11 to one. So that means when you walk into a classroom, you're not just a number, you're actually a name and our professors really can connect with you. I have tons of colleagues who still to this day meet up with professors that they had um, during their time at APU to just connect with them, um, get their advice. And it also really helps prepare you to get jobs because our professors connect you in internships as well um, during your time at APU. The next um, cornerstone that you'll see is our service cornerstone. So at APU, we're really service centered. We really love having our students participate in service um, outreach during their time um, at APU. And we do this through traveling all over the world and also serving locally. And then our last cornerstone is community. Um, I, similar to you, I came from Northwest Montana when I went to college and I was really nervous about still being able to go outside and participate in fun activities. And I really love our um, outreach program that does all all kinds of just like surf trips and things like that. Um, so that's a really great way to get connected at APU as well. This is just a little bit of our application requirements. You're welcome to ask me a little bit more about those as well um, through the Q&A feature. Um, but this year we did waive our SAT and ACT scores. Um, but for future, you can just kind of keep in the back of your mind that we require a 3.0 GPA um, and then you'll see our test scores as well. This next slide just kind of goes over a little snapshot of our application requirements. Um, and if you are planning to apply, just let me know and I'd love to chat you um, the application fee waiver code as well. Um, this is actually my favorite slide. It is actually the number of our students that receive financial aid through coming to APU. Um, so last year, 100% of our students received financial aid um, and we would really love to make that possible for you as well. And then this is my last slide. This is just my contact information. Um, so if you would like to reach out to me or you have any more questions, I'll also type this in the chat box as well. Um, but please reach out to me and I would be happy to get in touch with you. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Brooke. If you have any questions for Asusa Pacific University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Also be sure to uh, check out the chat because uh, although it is disabled for you as an attendee, our uh, presenters tonight might put some things in the chat. So definitely check it out. Next up, we have California Lutheran University. Hi everyone, my name is Wes Sullivan. I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admission at Cal Lutheran, and it is an absolute pleasure to be here with you this evening. Uh, originally from Boulder, Colorado, so especially excited to be here chatting with students from Colorado. Um, and I'd like to introduce my colleague, Diana Hernandez, who's in the Q&A, so if you have questions, she's there to answer those. Perfect, so let's go ahead and uh, move on, let's see. Uh, to talk a little bit about our academics, we have about three, or about our campus, sorry, we have just over 3,000 undergraduate students, uh, which translates to an average class size of about 17. Uh, and you can see we have students that attend our campus from all over the country, all over the world. Uh, one of the most common questions we get is if you have to be Lutheran to attend, uh, you absolutely do not. Uh, we have students from 39 different faiths on campus, and we see religion as a get to and not a have to on our campus. Uh, so lots of opportunities to engage, but there aren't any requirements uh, for religious service attendance on our campus. Uh, about a third of our students identify as first generation college students and just over half identify as coming from a traditionally underrepresented background. Uh, and specifically for the fair tonight, we've identified as a Hispanic serving institution since 2016. On the academic side, we offer 41 majors and 41 minors. 
uh, you can see some of the most popular listed here on the screen. Uh, and I, something to note is that when you apply to Cal Lutheran, you're applying to a university and not to a specific major or program. So you're actually able to change at any time while you're here. Uh, we know when you come in, you may not know, or you might change a few times. It's, it's quite common. Uh, so you have that ability. And another thing I'd like to highlight is our four to finish guarantee. Uh, we guarantee that you'll graduate Cal Lutheran in four years. Uh, we'll work with you on advising to make that happen. And if for some reason something happens with your coursework that doesn't allow you to finish in four years, we will pay for those remaining classes. Uh, there are some caveats to that, obviously, and we can chat with you about those details in the Q&A a little bit more. Uh, and we have zero impacted programs, so it's very easy to get the classes that you need. On the academic support side, we know the transition to college, it can be challenging for some. We have a lot of support built in through faculty advisors and a student success coach through our academic services department. Uh, we also have student support services, which is a federally funded TRIO program uh, for first gen and low income students. We have disability support services that aims to provide equal access and opportunities through accommodations for students. And we also have a writing and math center on our campus that can help uh, with drop-in tutoring and support uh, in those disciplines. Experiential learning is a huge part of your experience here at Cal Lutheran, and you'll see that primarily through three different areas, uh, through study abroad, through internships, and through undergraduate research. We have study abroad opportunities in over 80 countries. Students participate in internships uh, through our career center, uh, and you can earn up to eight credits of internship credit. Um, a course credit uh, through sometimes even paid internship opportunities. Uh, and then research, we offer undergraduate research opportunities in every major that we have on campus. And some of them you can do paid summer research fellowships. So you can actually get paid to stay on campus and do research. Uh, and that's a really great opportunity to really take what you're learning in the classroom to another level. And if you're considering grad school, a great thing to have on your resume. On the student life side, uh, obviously things look a little bit different in the pandemic. Uh, but we do have a lot of opportunities to engage um, in activities. So we have multicultural programming, we have intramural sports, uh, we have a student government that puts on homecoming, Monte Carlo, uh, and a Let It Snow event, which coming from Colorado, I always thought was funny, but uh, it doesn't snow a whole lot here in Southern California, so it's a really fun way to do sledding uh, and snowballs in December. Uh, and then we do have over 100 different clubs and organizations as well. Uh, on to residence life, coming from Colorado, uh, you would be required to live on campus your first three years. We do have 15 co-ed residence halls. Uh, all of them feature free parking and laundry. You can bring a car as early as your freshman year. Uh, we guarantee housing for all full-time undergrad students uh, and all of our halls are set up suite style. So you have that private, bed, uh, private bathroom uh, and shower, sometimes even a private bedroom and kitchen, depending on the hall you live in. Uh, and all of them have air conditioning, uh, which is really great uh, here in Southern California. We do have a lot of state-of-the-art facilities. We've been very fortunate for the last decade or so to be able to open a lot of really new brand uh, nice facilities. The two newest that we've opened are the William Rowland Art Center for Visual Arts on the Swinson Science Center just opened this fall uh, with um, 11 additional teaching labs and research spaces, eight research spaces for uh, our science programs. We are a Division III, NCAA Division III institution. We have 22 different teams. Uh, you can see those listed here on the screen. Uh, nationally ranked, uh, two of our teams, uh, women's volleyball and men's baseball, recently won national championships. And I think at the D3 level, have a really great balance uh, between being a student and an athlete. Uh, and some really world class training facilities. I encourage you to check them out at clusports.com. You can see a whole lot more. Oh. Sorry about that. On the application side, we're a Common App school. Uh, so in addition to the application itself, we require official transcripts as well as a letter of recommendation. Uh, we are test optional and that is a permanent change. Uh, so you can choose whether or not you'd like to submit SAT or ACT test scores. And we have two application deadlines, an early action deadline of November 1st and a regular decision deadline of January 1st. Uh, the primary difference between the two being when you're notified of your admission decision. And then quickly on to our scholarships, 97% uh, of our students receive some form of financial assistance. Our average financial aid package is just over $37,000. And we offer merit-based scholarships up to $25,000, presidential scholarships up to full tuition, uh, visual performing arts scholarships, uh, and congregational partners in education. So for students that are a member of a church congregation, uh, we do have scholarships that will match any donation from your congregation. Uh, and that's all I have to share with you. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll look forward to chatting more in the Q&A. Awesome, thank you so much, Wes. If you have any questions for California Lutheran University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have St. Edwards University.
Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is David Bernay, and I am the Director of International Admission at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas. So at St. Edwards University, we are a small, private, Catholic, Hispanic-serving institution, about 3,400 students. And as you see here, we have about 18 students on average in the classroom. But it's really important to note we have a small community, and we, uh, we know our students, and they know our professors. So that's one of the, I think, one of the best advantages of our, of our situation in, in Austin. Um, and we have about 15 to 1 uh, student uh, to teacher ratio. Um, 57 countries represented at St. Edwards and actually work with the international students, as I mentioned. So about 7% of our students come from outside the United States. Um, and so there's great diversity on campus in all different respects, but we also have 49 faith traditions. So we are a Catholic institution. We have all students from all different backgrounds and faiths represented on campus. Um, our students also study abroad and have gone to over, I think, 35 countries last year alone. Um, something to mention as well is that our students are um, doing great in terms of earning Fulbright scholarships with the number one uh, university last year in terms of students who earned Fulbright awards. So a lot to do on campus in terms of um, social engagement. We have over 100 uh, student organizations, um, 11 NCAA Division II teams. Um, our mascot is a goat, which is, we're on a hilltop. So everything is kind of about the hilltop at St. Edwards. Um, and uh, a mountain goat is our mascot, which is kind of fun. So um, we are in Austin, like I mentioned. Austin is a, a, one of the great reasons to come to St. Edwards. Um, Austin's an amazing place. It's uh, one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, about the 10th largest city in the US. Um, we really consider ourselves a big city with a small town feel. Um, Austin is the live music capital of the world. Um, so we have over 250 music venues in the city. We're home to some of the world's biggest music festivals. Um, Austin City Limits and South by Southwest are just a couple of those. Um, and it's just a really great place. And if you're interested in things like music, but also uh, in technology, we're home to some, I think over 7,000 different technology companies. Um, and some I'll talk about in a slide in a little bit, um, but it's a place where you can really dive into both entertainment, technology and um, music. This is the view from our campus. We are about five minutes south of downtown in Austin. We're right in the heart of Austin um, and our campus is just in a really great location. Like I mentioned before, um, Austin's a great place to go to school. There's a lot of different you know, young college uh, age students in Austin. Um, it's one of the best places to live in the US as well. Um, in terms of what we do academically at St. Edwards, we, uh, we like to say we do a practical approach to liberal arts, which means, of course, you're gonna learn a lot of very important skills in the classroom, um, but you're also gonna have sort of another foundational uh, um, experience in terms of careers, right? We want you to get experience out in the real world. Um, these are the popular majors at St. Edwards. So psychology, business, biology, communication. Um, but we also have some very specialized majors at, at the institution. So because of the technology industry in our area, we have video game development, um, digital media management, which is sort of the technology side of the business industry, or excuse me, the business side of the technology industry, entrepreneurship, of course, where we have a lot of students who are starting their own companies. I mean, that really goes well with uh, the industries that are in Austin right now. Um, of course, there's also lots of different great majors like theater. Um, so performing arts is also very strong at uh, St. Edwards. Um, and as a lot of my colleagues mentioned, you will have a success coach you are, you are assigned to when you come to St. Edwards to help you choose your classes. Something also important to mention, we're a Catholic institution. We were founded by the same person who founded Notre Dame in Indiana. So these are sort of the mission aspects of St. Edwards. We really support a diverse uh, student body um, and we really understand the importance of service in our community and educating the mind and the heart together. So it's something to, to mention there, but uh, also that we do not require any specific classes in religion, um, but uh, students are encouraged to pursue their own um, religion outside of classroom. Residence life, we have six freshman residence halls at St. Edwards. Um, the great thing, sort of a great advantage, I suppose, of the pandemic right now is that students um, actually have their own rooms on campus. Um, we're continuing that for the fall semester due to uh, the pandemic right now. Students are living in their own rooms and they have their own bathrooms for the most part. You always get your own, uh, you always get your first choice of where you can live on campus uh, and first choice of, uh, of area as well in, in terms of residence hall. Um, so. It's a really great opportunity for all of you to live on campus. Um, we have great outcomes in terms of where our students go after St. Edwards. So I wanted to mention um, a couple of things about Austin. I said we're you know, great in terms of technology. We have some of the biggest companies in Austin, including Whole Foods, which is uh, actually from Austin. Um, Google, of course, which has a, a very large uh, office here. 
and also Apple, which has its largest facility outside of California. Um, another piece of news uh, that just came out is that Tesla is building its largest factory, uh, or actually I think a billion dollar factory about 10 minutes from our campus. Um, so it's great opportunities for students um, with new economic development in our area. Um, and so kind of great proven outcomes for jobs. There are three ways to apply to St. Edwards University. So you can use either the St. Edwards application, the National Common application, or the Apply Texas application. Um, and when you apply by December 1st each year, we'll waive the application fee. You're automatically gonna be considered for merit-based scholarships. Um, and um, similar to Cal Lutheran, we are a test optional university and that has been implemented um, uh, permanently. So you do not need to submit a test score when you apply to St. Edwards. Um, this is some information about our scholarships. Um, if I can give a piece of advice, it's really important to go to all of these uh, calculators at different websites uh, for different universities to understand your cost and we'll help you with that process. Thanks again. Uh, back to the next university. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. If you have any questions for St. Edwards University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Texas Tech University. Hi everybody, this is Jen calling, or Jen with Texas Tech University, Jen Miller. Um, and a little bit about Texas Tech. We started back in 1923. Back then we had 914 students. And these days we have grown a little bit. We've actually hit 30, uh, 40,332 students. Um, we are in Lubbock, Texas, which according to my students is about a seven and a half hour drive from where we are right now. According to the parents, it's about an eight and a half hour drive. So depends really who's doing the driving. Uh, even though we do have so many students on campus there, our average class size is 30. So it does give you a chance to still get to know your professors and to still get to know your classmates. Uh, we do have more than 550 different student organizations there on campus, so you've got lots and lots of options, uh, lots of different organizations to get involved with. We've got a strong Greek life, if you've ever thought about rushing, you know, fraternity or sorority. We also have, like with every single major, they have multiple organizations that are tied to each of those majors. So, like I said, more than 550. And if we don't have something that you're interested in, you can grab a few friends and start it up. Like uh, one of my students down at, um, in at Air Academy down in um, Colorado Springs. He actually started up a technical climbing club and they go every single weekend over to Paladero Canyon, which is about an hour and a half away from campus. It is the second largest canyon in the country after the Grand Canyon. And they spend the whole weekend climbing or kayaking, mountain biking, hiking, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, we do have a great study abroad program. There are more than 80 different countries and it's actually required for some majors such as engineering. It's actually required. It's required for architecture. And they've been discussing for a couple of years now about possibly requiring it for business students. Um, we do have a Texas Tech University in Seville, Spain. And we also have one that opened up two Decembers ago in Costa Rica, down in San Jose, Costa Rica. We are a tier one research institution. So you can come in no matter what your major is, and you can participate in undergrad research. You, or if you've had a really cool idea of your own, you can actually write up a proposal give it to your advisor and they can get you funding for that. Uh, we are a D1 school. I don't know if you guys watch basketball, but a couple of years ago, of course, before the pandemic, um, our basketball team actually made it to finals. We did get beat by, beat by Virginia and over time it was heartbreaking, but it was a very, very exciting game. Um, we do have our football stadium, which is um, huge. <laughs> actually, we've got a 12,000 seat student section. Um, so hang on, my not going forward here. I'm going to stop just for a second and share again. Sorry about that. It was frozen. So sorry about that. Hold on. Jen, try and uh, try and click on the the arrows that pop up in your bottom left of the slideshow. Okay, thank you very, very much. I 
they were hidden. Um, okay, we do have 150 different majors there. So you've got lots of options, even though tech is in the name, that is not what we're all about. We've got everything from visual and performing arts. We've got education. We definitely have a lot of engineering. That's a big thing that we are known for. Uh, we've got a fantastic architecture program, as well as agricultural sciences, business, um, honors college. So lots of cool, amazing options there. We also have our medical school right there on campus. And we even have a university hospital. And the cool thing about both our medical school and our law school, which is also right there on campus, is that um, you got they actually give preference to students coming up through our undergrad programs before they'll even admit outside students. So it kind of gives you a foot in the door there. And one thing I do love about tech is that if you are an out-of-state student and you happen to be awarded a thousand dollars of any Texas Tech scholarship, you automatically get in-state tuition. Plus your scholarship will be subtracted from the in-state tuition. So it brings it down about $12,000 in cost. So if you are more curious about the cost, just let me know. I can show you what those numbers look like. Um, and then, so we, right now, we are test optional. We haven't gotten word yet what we're going to be this coming up year. As far as our applications, we accept the Common App, Apply Texas, and as of the summer, we will start accepting the Coalition App as well. For our job placement, we have, we've hit 99% job placement within six months of graduation for all of our students who are actively seeking jobs. Um, and then we are an HSI institution. Our current numbers right now, we have 29. 4% um, Hispanic students that are there on campus. And so this is my contact information. If you guys do have any questions at all, I don't know if you want to take a screenshot or if you want to, um, you know, just reach out and I'll put this down in the chat as well. But just let me know. I am more than happy to meet with you guys. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be actually able to meet in public. And um, I do live in Highlands Ranch. So I'm in Colorado here and I can meet you at Starbucks, wherever you like. All the treats are on me and I can tell you guys all about us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. If you have any questions for Texas Tech University, please put it down in the Q&A down at the bottom. Next up, we have University of California, Santa Barbara. Buenas noches todos. Good evening. My name is Cuca Acosta. I'm the Associate Director for Admission at the University of California, Santa Barbara, UCSB, home of the Gauchos. The picture on the screen is actually campus. Mm -hmm, that is correct. One third of the university is surrounded by the Pacific Ocean. So, ooh, ah, yes. Now we're located about a hundred miles north of Los Angeles. Most students will say, oh, do I have to fly into LA? Mm -hmm, no, no, my friends. UC Santa Barbara is right next to the Santa Barbara airport, which has direct flights to Denver. So find yourself coming to visit when our campus opens. For Santa Barbara's campus, you're going to find that we are part of the nine University of California structure. We're the middle child with about 23,000 students. Almost 90% of our students are undergraduates. For UC Santa Barbara, we're a tier one research institution. And what that means is that our faculty are teaching and hopefully they're conducting research in areas of your interest. Maybe it's that they're one of our Nobel Prize winners. It could be that you're with Finn Kinlan, who's a Nobel Prize winner in economics, and then you're adding a certificate in business entrepreneurship at UCSB. It could be that you're in one of our top tier computer science programs, biology, so much more. At UC Santa Barbara, our goal, our ambition is to not just teach you an academic subject, but also to help you understand who you are and keep you happy. Part of that is being part of our student clubs and organizations, 500 student clubs and organizations at UCSB every year. This includes things that are academic in nature, cultural in nature, it could be things that are athletic in nature, and more. Maybe you're part of Hermanas Unidas or Baile Flocorico, the business, the Latino Business Association, our Black Student Union. I mean, there are options, my friends, there are options. We are a Division I campus with 19 NCAA Division I teams. Right now, fingers crossed, our men's baseball team is ranked in the top 10. Let's go, Gauchos! 
For academics, you should know that we have about 100 different majors and three different colleges. In the College of Engineering, UC Santa Barbara is very selective. All five of our engineering programs are considered selective based off of space limitations, as we have one of the smaller engineering programs in the state of California. We will be looking at math, math, and math, so please pre-calculus by senior year. We do have a College of Letters and Science that offers you 80 programs, including undeclared as an option. We don't admit by major in this college, so please feel confident in that. And then our College of Creative Studies, which offers eight programs where you create new knowledge in one of the eight fields. Please look at these three, look at the link I put in the chat box for you. Note that if you have questions about a major title, we often get confused when students are looking for marine biology. Santa Barbara calls it aquatic biology. When you're looking for international relations, we call it global studies. So let me help you find your major. When it comes to the admissions process, we do a holistic review based off of a self-reported UC application. That holistic review will take into consideration your academic coursework as well as your personal accomplishments. We look at everything in context and we never compare students to one another. When it comes to those academic fields, there are seven subjects, which in California, we call our A through G requirements. You'll see them on the screen. These courses with a C or better are needed by the end of senior year. Note that you should find yourself challenging yourself in areas of your interest. So if you love math, go then on a fourth year of math. If you like language, como español a la mejor, we'll take three or four years of that. When it comes to the admissions process and updates, we are test blind at UCSB. Yep, you heard it. We will not look at testing ACT or SAT for admission and or scholarships. Also note that we understand that students did have some pandemic term grading, so pass and fail. We will allow students to use pass and fail, pass for winter 2020 through summer 2021 when it comes to your grading. All right, you should note that in the University of California, Santa Barbara, we are looking at being the big four-year university in the county. That means that if you're looking for internships, if you're looking for job shadowing, maybe you're part of our pre-med program at UCSB and you're interning at the local hospital, which is biking distance from campus. You'll find yourself maybe thinking of an internship at one of the engineering firms, which is biking distance from campus. Maybe you're thinking of doing something in public relations, which is biking distance from campus. What you're gonna love is that for UCSB, over 400 employers come to campus every year. During the pandemic, they came virtually, but they still came and they talked to our students and they hired our students. We're excited that for many of our students, we want you to meet them and they are willing to talk to you through our social media channels. So please, please, please look at our student takeovers over the course of March and April. Two big events for you to recognize. The first is our open house, which starts March 22nd through the 25th. And the second is our faculty lectures. Our faculty lectures include things like conspiracy theories. Oh, I know, join me for that one, won't you? Regardless of the fact that you might not be ready for Zoom faculty lectures, or maybe you are, you can always call me or email me. My contact information is in the chat box and also on the screen. I hope that UCSB is a good fit for you. Awesome, Kuka, thank you so much. If you have any questions for University of California Santa Barbara, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Last but certainly not least, we have Whittier College. Hello, let me just share my screen real quick. Wonderful. So my name is Megan Post. I'm the Associate Director of Admission here at Whittier College. I'm very excited to be here and tell you a little bit about Whittier College. Um, so Whittier College is located in Southern California. We're not uh, too long of a flight um, for all of you, but we're located um, in LA County. 
Um, we straddle LA and Orange County, which is kind of nice because you get the best of both worlds. You get um, the beaches as well as Disneyland and all of the metropolitan area of downtown LA and just the greater LA area. So we're in a great location where students are able to take advantage of the region, but also internships, fellowships. Um, there's tons of those opportunities available since there's so much industry within that small little space. Um, when it comes to academic offerings, we have over 30 majors available. Some of the more popular majors are going to be biology, kinesiology, business administration, and psychology. But we also have some pre-professional programs like pre-med, pre-physical therapy, as well as a 3-2 engineering program. Um, our students can double major, they add um, majors and minors, and then we also have a self-design major where students are able to build a major from the ground up based off of the career path that they want to go into or interests, or if you have multiple interests, you can combine those majors. That's really what a liberal arts education is about, is finding those connections between all the concentrations and all the classes that you will be taking. So these are all the majors that we offer. When it comes to our campus community, we are a small liberal arts college. We have 1,700 traditional undergraduates. We do have a few graduate programs in education, but we are primarily an undergraduate focused institution. Um, that definitely does help when you're looking for uh, letters of recommendations, looking for opportunities for research. You're not competing against graduate students where you're the main focus of our campus. Um, our average class size is about 19 students, but as you get into your major, your class sizes will shrink down even more. Um, we also heavily encourage our students to take on hands-on opportunities throughout their four years. So studying abroad is very highly encouraged of our students. Um, we have what's called our Global Poet Scholarship, where students can have a one-time scholarship of $2,000 to study abroad. Um, it's a great way to have hands-on experience and be able to test out um, different areas, explore, and also get to know different cultures. So we definitely encourage our students to take advantage of that no matter what major, even if you're thinking about going pre-med, it is still highly encouraged that you study abroad. Um, even as a student athlete, we want you to take full advantage of your college experience. Um, when it comes to our campus community, we are very inclusive and we are also residential. Um, that is definitely important for students that are coming from out of state, the residential piece, because you don't want to come to a campus that becomes a ghost town on the weekend. Um, we have about 40% of our students are out of state or international students. So it creates for an active community during the week as well as on the weekends. Um, we guarantee housing all four years for our students, but we only require students to live on campus for the first three years unless they live within 30 miles of campus. So there will always be a campus community for you no matter what, what year you're at at Whittier College. Um, when it comes to different programming, um, one of my favorite departments is our Office of Equity and Inclusion. Um, that houses all of our cultural clubs, um, different clubs based off of any student's identity. So all the clubs are categorized under the Office of Equity and Inclusion. And that tends to be a big hub for first generation students, um, students of color, students that are, are um, um, trying to join different clubs that are based off of their identities. And then we also have our student life division, which is going to house all of our social clubs when it comes to like our societies are very similar in um, characteristic to fraternities and sororities. And they also have all the clubs are based off of majors and interests um, activities outside of the classroom, like a surfing club, a hiking club. Um, so we have a ton of different activities for students, as well as a, we are division three. So we have um, men and women's sports on campus and beautiful facilities that we're constantly adding on, adding new, as well as um, allowing all of our students to partake in those different facilities as well. So our pool's open to students as well as our weight room too. Um, when it comes to our financial aid opportunities, um, this is one area that we have expanded. Our John Greenleaf Whittier Scholarship is awarded to students upon admission based off of their academic profile and all ultimate fit to the institution. And those scholarships range anywhere from 15,000 up to 36,000 a year. Um, so that definitely helps fund your education and that's given to you upon admission. But we also give all the need-based aid from FAFSA as well as any state aid that you may be eligible for. 
but we also have two scholarships that you can apply for the leadership scholarship so if you're an active leader in your community um, you can definitely apply for that as well as we have talent scholarships in music art theater and theater tech as well as um, the raise me scholarship so if you're a part of raise me you can follow multiple schools and earn micro scholarships um, as far as our application profile and what our um, admitted student population looks like, the, on the left side is all our application requirements. So very basic for the common application, personal statement, letter of recommendation, transcripts, and uh, test scores. We are test optional, so you can either submit them or choose not to, and they don't count towards your scholarship at all. And then on the right side is our admitted student profile from this last year's class that came in. So it's just to give you a range of what we're looking at for students over overall. Um, I will put my contact information in the chat, but thank you so much. And it was great talking to you and telling you more about Whittier College. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan. If you have any questions for Whittier College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Uh, with that said, actually, uh, we do have a few extra minutes um, that uh, we can take questions in that Q&A, but also I have a question for you all. So my presenters, feel free to uh, go ahead and put your videos on. Um, so I have a question for you all. We have a couple minutes. We could probably get through everybody if everyone keeps it uh, sort of brief. Um, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And Azuka, uh, or I'm sorry, Azusa Pacific University, go ahead and go first, and then we'll follow up with California Lutheran University. Great. Yeah. My advice would be just take the time to really research into all the different schools. Going to an event like this is a great opportunity to get time to do that. But also, I think find a place that feels like home away from home. You're going to be there for four years. And um, most of us are pretty far away from where you are right now. Um, so find a place that feels like where you're going to be comfortable and you're going to feel um, at home, even with being so far away. So that's my advice. Awesome, thank you. California Lutheran? Um, I, I would say something similar, but in addition to that, I would say once you get to your campus, get involved, uh, stay on campus, join clubs, be an athlete, whatever it is that you're interested in, uh, take advantage of it, be involved. That's how you're gonna make your friends and, and feel like a big part of the campus community. Awesome, thank you. St. Edwards University. I would say as you're doing your research for the college process, don't be afraid to reach out to the admission office and connect with your admission counselor, but also to speak with a current student on campus to understand their experiences. Great advice so far. Texas Tech University, what would you add? I definitely would reiterate the going to visit campus. I mean, that is the very best way to figure out which is going to be the best place for you. We're all great schools. So, you know, it's just kind of a matter of narrowing it down and definitely get to know your admissions account counselor, uh, all of us, because we are the ones we advocate for you guys. We will go to bat for you guys. We can help you through the process. There's no such thing as a silly question. And you guys are the reason that we're here. And you guys are the reason that we love our job. So please reach out. Thank you. University of California, Santa Barbara. Advice, simple. Everything changes. So what was good for your best friend's cousin's neighbor last year is not what's going to happen for you. So stay up to date. Official websites only when it comes to looking for information. So as much fun as social media is, it's not an official website. Please and thank you. Awesome. And last but not least, Whittier College. I definitely want to echo everything that um, all the representatives have said, but um, one other element um, other than just reaching out to the admission staff is also reach out to the faculty. Um, get in touch with them in the departments that you're interested in because they're really going to give you insight into what your first year is going to look like and what it's going to look like once you enter into your major. So don't be shy to reach out to faculty, staff, anyone at the college level because everyone's there to help and support you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone, for your advice. I hope uh, my attendees, you, you took notes because that was fantastic advice. So thank you so much. And thank you so much, attendees and our participants uh, for this evening's virtual college fair. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, this was a fantastic virtual college fair, and I hope you learned a lot of great information from our amazing institutions presenting tonight. 
Couple quick things before you head out. Uh, after you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. So my attendees, please, if you can give us some feedback, that would be fantastic. Also, we don't have any more sessions uh, for this evening, but there may be some more sessions on strivescan.com that you want to sign up for in the future. So check those out. Last but not least, maybe grandma, maybe dad, maybe a friend, maybe you, you wanna just check out the recording again for tonight, please do. And that recording in the coming days will be available at strivescan.com backslash uh, Cherry Creek. So with that said, thank you all again so much. Have a great evening and see you all later. Bye-bye.